Hello, regulars. You're listening to Floor by Floor, a Tower of God podcast discussing the latest chapters of the webtoon. I'm Reziat. And I'm Beerlane. And we're your hosts. Welcome to the third floor where we'll be discussing Chapter 568 or Season 3, Episode 151. We're in for quite an episode. Please keep in mind there will be adult themes present in this chapter, but it, they're just mentioned. It's not that big of a deal. But before we get into that, a quick recap of the last chapter. While Lilial and Endorsey fight, Lilial stalls for time with questions. She asks Endorsey why she fell in love with the Slayer candidate, and Endorsey answers because of eel over rice. Lilial doesn't get it, and we kind of don't, unless you remember season one. <laughs> and her cat beast stalks closer. Endorsey then asks Lilial what's her relationship to the snakes. She answers that she's not sure. The snakes mentioned her mother had been kidnapped by the Slayer candidate, but she didn't believe it. And Dorsey tells her it's true and convinces Lilial by dropping her mother's name, and Lilial freaks out, frightening her cat beast and putting the attack on hold. She demands and Dorsey take her to the Slayer candidate, but Endorsey refuses. It's not until she says she'll stop the snakes from attacking Baum that Endorsey begrudgingly agrees. Baum yells out Laura's name to get the attention of the snakes and attempts to bargain with them. If they tell him why they need Laura, and the reason is not impure, he will tell them if they let him go. The snakes don't buy it, of course, and instead threaten to get their information by force. As they fight, Baum pulls out the red and blue Thrissa, level 3 metamorphosis, and with the red Thrissa to the snake's throat, repeats his offer politely. As politely as you can get with a giant knife to your throat, but sure. And Dorsey and Lilial arrive at the wreckage left over from Baum and Ren's battle, and are confused by who this bloody heap on the ground is. After nearly being stepped on, the leech attached to Ren's hand speaks up and admits to being beaten by Baum. Lilial is shocked that Baum really is capable of defeating not just any ranker, but a Jihad's Royal Enforcement Division ranker. And the chapter ended there. It was a chapter full of action. It was a lot of setup. And that takes us to where we're at now, ridding ourselves for what's going to happen next. We were not prepared. We were not prepared. This chapter went there and it was like, whoa. And all of our predictions so far have kind of been thrown out the window, unfortunately. <laughs> We've become a good marker of what's not going to happen. So <laughs> I'm not too sure if we're going to continue on that route, but we'll see. We'll keep trying because it's fun to guess and it's fun to see where CU takes us next, even if it is a sudden left turn when we expect it or right. So let's get to the chapter. It opens with Endorsey threatening to step on Ren, the leech, but Ren offers to help them find Bomb because he finally accepted that Bomb is strong and is a necessary asset for the war. He voices his support for Lilial's marriage to the Slayer candidate and gets threatened to get stepped on again. After some bantering, Endorsey and Lilial accept his help to go find Bomb. Now we do a POV change into the heart of the story. We get to hear the Strand Snake story. He first defines a Strand Snake as a snake that lives forever by shedding and splitting every year. If you consume an old Strand Snake, one gains their power, but you must first overcome their poison. Traumarai found this Strand Snake after tens of thousands of years and trapped it in a pot, or a bowl, which is the name for the device animals use to house the divine beasts. He spent a lot of time in there until one day, Lilial's mother, Laura, came to see it. She was crying when she asked it to make her child stronger, or else her and her family would be in danger. The strand snake fell in love and decided to help her, but there was only one way since the child was still unborn and just a bundle of cells. It told her if she could love it, for even an instance, to come back within ten days. And she did. The strand snake didn't know if it was out of love or necessity, but it vowed to protect her and the child forever. They did the do, guys. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They did. And I'm just sitting there looking at this chapter going, what just happened? There's panels of trauma arrive watching as his wife, Laura, consummates her union with the strand snakes. This dirty, dirty boy. And yeah. It got worse with that. Trauma and literally watching this happen. And you must remember that Laura is his wife. We will point that out again. Laura is his wife. She's already pregnant with a child. And this happens. 
all for the sake of making a princess. Meanwhile, Bamu, bless his little heart, he just thinks to himself, but doesn't Lilio have a twin sister? He's just looking down at the strand snake like, this is flipping weird. He's so used to the weirdness going on in a tower by now that he's just like, hold on a second. There's something, there's a plot hole in this story. He's more focused on the plot hole than the fact that there was snacks on screen. And Dorsey, Lilial, and Ren, the leech, arrive via bomb bong into the hall. They find a room that Bomb and the Strand Snake are talking and overhear the conversation, starting from where Laura asked the Strand Snake to help her child become strong. Lilial had been born normal, but she was immune to the poison, so the Strand Snakes gave pieces of itself daily until Laura stopped coming. Then, it heard Lilial had been selected to become a princess of Jihad. Lilial, having enough of this nonsense, breaks into the room, screaming that it's all a lie, that it's just a way for the snake to get to her mother. She urges Bomb to cut its head off and kill it right away, and she's having none of it. You're not my real dad. <laughs> the snake is hurt. It stays quiet. They might as well have drawn a little tear coming out of its eye because it dashes out of the room, knocking Bomb off it, and going on a rampage searching for Laura. Bomb runs after the snakes, but it's going way too fast, and he asks Lilial to tell it to stop because it's going after her mother, but Lilial is still standing there, completely shocked. She calls it a delusional creature, and that she hates everything, and as she says that she wants to give up on everything, she gets a message on her pocket saying, If you're giving up, can I take it all? Lilial figures out who the message is from, and takes off down the hall. The strand snake split up in all of its pieces, barrows down the hallway, smashing doors left and right in search of Laura. And while it does so, one of the doors opens and out comes Shiliel, Lilial's twin sister. As the snake comes barreling down towards her, she stands there and introduces herself as a princess of Jihad from the Lopobial family, as Lilial's twin sister, and maybe the strand snake's daughter. The snakes charge past her for a moment before turning around and stopping to stare at her in confusion. She explains to the strand snake that she's a twin who was strong from birth, therefore most likely to be its daughter. Lilio catches up with her and asks her why she's there and how she knows about the strand snake. Shilio explains that she's always been jealous of Lilio getting the first chance. Shilio was born first, but Lilio was still their mother's favorite. And while they're going back and forth, Baum and Dorsey and Ren and Bleach catch up. Shilio recognizes Baum as the one chosen to marry them and introduces herself as one of the potential bride candidates. Shilio says that the family had wanted to test who would be the better candidate between Shilio and Lilio, so he brought the strand snake there and wanted to see who would control the snake with the truth. Shilio goes on to say that Lilio is weak, letting go of an opportunity like this, and that regardless of how they feel about it, if they do not obey the family head, they and their mother would be in danger. So Shiliel extends her hand to Baum. She asks him to agree to the marriage. He stares at her hand for a moment and then says no. Shiliel is taken aback, insulted probably, and asks if Baum is a eunuch or a woman or something. To which Baum firmly answers no. And that's the end of the chapter. He cracked me up with that, just saying straight up no to her. They drew it so fantastically with the thick lines of just deadpan humor. What reason does he need to have to say no? Leave him alone. <laughs> he has all the reasons under the sun to say no, but they're so shocked to just be declined like that. Eh, the princesses are just used to people throwing themselves down and everything they have for them. Yeah, we see how they treat Endorsey, so I can imagine they're used to the same. They're treated like celebrities, because I guess in a sense, in the tower they are. There's not that many of them, and there's someone people aspire to be like. But yeah, this chapter is a roller coaster. And there's no getting off. Not yet. So to start off, let's go over the hot button topic of this chapter. Well, the second one, I suppose. The Strand Snake... And Laura. It was kind of shocking to hear that she was forced to uh, do the snake. And it's very much implied that she was forced to do it with Traumarai standing over them, watching them. So I think that's a given. The strand snake himself questions it. 
like he wasn't sure if she had to do it by choice, if it was actually some sort of emotional decision. We know it's by choice. The poor strand snake is just sitting there actually falling in love with Laura because she was the first human woman he had seen. Poor thing. Seeing as he has no other point of reference, that's all he has. Poor thing. He was just lonely and made a lovely friend for snakes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting to find out that though at the time, yes, Laura was pregnant, that it was early on in the pregnancy that something could happen. So whatever it is they did, they attempted to grant the fetus some of its power. But it ended up not working. Unfortunately, the snaky shenanigans were not powerful enough because Lilio was born normal. But as Baum points out, yes, Lilio has a twin, Shilio. And Shilio straight up declares how she seems to have been born with the snake's power. So Laura went on under threat. To not only give him one jihad princess, but two of them, with the strand snake's help. But the strand snake doesn't seem to know that Shilial exists. So what could possibly be the motivations for Laura's hiding of one of her twins from the strand snake? Is it possible that she never had an opportunity to tell him? Because she only really went to see him when it came to Lilial, and... The strand snake was straight up sending Laura pieces of itself to feed to Lilial until she stopped coming. So perhaps she wasn't allowed to say anything. And then Shilial makes mention that their mother had preferential treatment for Lilial. It is heavily implied here that Shilial is indeed the strand snake's daughter, his actual daughter, probably born of their union. It's possible that maybe she never told him about Shilial, the other twin out of some form of resentment, whether for herself or towards Shilio for what Shilio reminds her of. So it really very much begs the question, are Shilio and Lilio actually twins? I mean, in real life, it's possible to bear fraternal twins with two different fathers, but... Hmm? But this is Siu's world. What exactly is going on here? Uh, it's weird. And anything could happen. So, I don't know, for that one, I think we'll have to wait for clarification. Personally, I don't think we're going to get one, just simply because we already got the lore dump, and it's better for him, for us to just write that off as movie magic. <laughs> because it's a snake. How is that possible to begin with? It is literally just a bunch of snakes put together. <laughs> what sort of Shinsu power did it use to breathe life into this woman? Granted, we know if Shinsu anything is possible, but... I don't know, man. This is getting crazy. It's getting a little ridiculous. It's a little too much for me to think about. I don't want to think about snakes that much. Oh, my God. <laughs> We've coined a new term. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. And, you know, on the topic of Shilial, she's here. We suddenly see her season three debut after her first appearance so long ago at the Name Hunt Station. I'm not sure if it's really a shocking revelation. I think it's more shocking about the implications with the strand snake involving her and the fact that she seems to know all about the strand snake this entire time. Shilio straight up mentions that she's jealous of Lilio, being her mother's favorite, kind of living in her sister's shadow, her sister seeming to get all of the opportunities for power, for advancement, for all sorts of things. But with her having inherited the strand snake's power off the bat, it seems like Shilio may be the more powerful of the two here, if just by conviction, by presence of mind, and by resolve. And she seems to be just gung-ho about going ahead with traumatized plans of one of them ending up marrying the Slayer candidate. She does seem like the more level-headed of the two. We see Lilio exploding in anger at every opportunity, and Shilio shows up, chill as a cucumber, like she's already had a chance to think about all of this. And she's decided to just go for it taking advantage of the situation and then wrangling it to her control, perhaps. But something that caught my attention here, and, well, we haven't really seen much of Shilio outside of way back at the name hunt station, but her expression seemed kind of off in this chapter. The way she's drawn in the panels, it's like she's almost resigned to committing to what Traumarai is asking of them, despite what it means for her going forward, like losing her seat as a princess and 
being known as the Slayer candidate's wife and whatnot. There's some fan theories being thrown around in the discussion after the chapter dropped that Shilio may or may not be trying to take the drop for Lilio in losing the princess position and losing her power, etc., to allow Lilio to continue being a princess. Or the possibility that Shilio could believe that being recognized by Traumarai and marrying Baum is a no-brainer choice to establish herself and gain power. Which makes you really wonder what her motivations really are here. Is it really as plain text as we see it, where she's just going for power? Or is she trying to help her sister? Because it kind of seemed as though they were close, despite the secret held between them. Could Shilio be more power-hungry than anyone else we've seen so far in this arc? suddenly coming out of nowhere and snapping up at the opportunity. What do you think about that? The fact that she already knew everything is quite suspicious. Is it something that she's already talked about with her mom, Laura? Is it something that she's already been ordered to do with Traumarai? Is this actually all just a test for Lilio to see if she's actually strong enough to follow orders? There's just so many questions for everyone's actions here that I'm not too sure what's going on. It was a really tricky introduction. If I had to pick an answer, it feels like you're right in that her expressions seemed very determined, but also sad. It feels like she's taking the fall for something and withholding information from Lilio. But of course, Bob is going to throw a wrench in her plans because he doesn't want to marry anyone. He does not. He's tired of people trying to use him for everything, especially for marriage now. And even though he went on to rant about he wouldn't do it without consent, here he gets Shilio's consent and he still says no. He just straight up doesn't want to be married. Yeah, he doesn't give consent. (laughs) Everyone else can give their consent, but if he doesn't give his own consent, that doesn't work either. That's the end of that. The tower is just a controversial place. And speaking of controversy, the big hot button topic of this chapter, the number one, is the last panel of this particular chapter. So as we mentioned, and this scene in the chapter, Shilio holds her hand out and straight up tells Baum, hey, let's just go ahead and get married. And Baum looks at her hand, looks back up at her, and just says, no. And Shilio is just taken aback at that. She's a Jihad princess. They are used to having things thrown at them. And so Shilio says something that caused a bit of discourse in the fandom. Looks like there's some disagreements on what exactly she said. And it got messy. So what happened was this. A fan translation of this chapter was released, as is every week. The translator behind this particular translation also provided their translation to the scanlation group that most Raw's readers have come to rely on. Mostly because they're the last ones left. The translator appears to have mistranslated or added onto the chat bubble on the last panel that belongs to Shilio. Just in case you're not familiar with it, the fan translated bubble says this. Are you actually a woman or gay or one of those arrow ace people or something? Which, well, yeah. It caused quite a fight between groups. And you can probably imagine what they are. So here's the deal. In the source text, she says something else. It even has a censored word in it. The text in the bubble actually translates to the following. Are you a eunuch or a girl? Where the word that can be translated to eunuch is a censored word. The literal meaning of that word is, well, what it is. But in modern Korean, it is a derogatory slang word towards men. For lack of being able to put it prettily, she's basically insulting him by asking if he's not a real man in two different ways. But here's the deal. Bomb sucks at reading between the lines. It's canon. So, no, unfortunately, there is no reference to his orientation. He's more just telling her no because, indeed, he's neither one of those things, literally. And honestly, Bomb shutting her down in the chapter ending like that is hilarious. It was a great ending, if it had been translated correctly. And as a result, there's a firestorm all over social media about whether or not Baum is gay, when it's not even mentioned at all. And unfortunately, people are still running with that translation. They're not willing to accept the actual translation. People just want to believe what they want to believe. 
So take it as you want. That's the truth. Agreed. And it's just one of the problems that happens with us being restricted to one translation source as we are now. There used to be multiple. A couple of people have been taken down by Webtoon and DMCAs or just conceding to another translation group. But it seems as though we will be in need of another group. Just fact-checking, double-checking, etc. Or, or they need a better proofreader, just to begin with. Yeah, because I don't think we're going to get the official translations caught up anytime soon. We're still going to have that gap just because of how the licensing works. It's like a month and a half until we find out what Webtoon decides to go with on this translation. Yeah, I think that's going to be a really interesting chapter. Oh, Lord. If anyone remembers it, because it seems as though people forget things that happened three weeks ago. And I've even seen people who have forgotten who Shiliol is. So that was the bomb of this chapter. Shiliol suddenly showing up and knowing about the snake and the whole history about the snake. Which is interesting about the snake, really. Feeding pieces of itself to power up Liliol. Even if she was born normal, after she was born, for an extended period of time... So as we know, Endorsey was picked up by the snake charmer, who's also a strand snake. And Endorsey mentioned how, you know, she would eat better than the higher in the ranking she was within the competitions of the family that she was in to become a candidate for princess. Which, well, seeing as she's here now, she succeeded. It's just interesting to note that Endorsey has a taste for eel, not just because bomb giving it to her made it taste better, but it's probably because she's been consuming strand snakes since she was a child. It's an interesting little analogy. Well, well, I see it. I don't know if anyone else sees it. Just about Endorsey liking eel and bomb giving it to her, and bomb is another source of power and change and transformation and the tower or at least in her life too because she's following him they're friends but you know she's a follower and that's kind of a trait that's required from the princesses isn't it someone that's good at following orders and following commands indeed and in dorsey despite being very hard-headed and independent we see her chasing after bomb a lot but i have a different take to this eel taste she mentions that she doesn't eat meat when we first met her. Could it be that she couldn't stand the idea of eating meat again? Of eating these pieces of eel because of a reminder of that life that she used to lead? But then the opportunity came to taste it again with Bomb, and it didn't taste like snake anymore. It tasted like eel. It was an opportunity for her to regain her ability to eat food and enjoy it without having to fight for power. Just plain regular food. Yeah. It's given to her by a friend out of goodwill, even though, you know, she was made to sign a piece of paper for friends. 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 And I mean, they're <laughs> friends now. They're legit friends now. So it worked out. Yeah. It was a point in her life where she felt free from this life, this purpose of becoming a princess. And that's why she keeps acting out. She's had an actual taste of freedom and she wants more of it. Yeah. And maybe that's what Bob represents to her, but we don't quite know yet because she hasn't resolved her own feelings. Indeed. As we remember from the floor of death, Garam questioned her about what her true feelings for Baum are. Are they emotional? Are they actually love? Or is she more entertained or obsessed or enamored by the idea of what Baum is? He's a chance for freedom. He's a chance for change. He's a chance for her to do something else with her life other than this role that she's been forced into since she was a child. I look forward to that lore dump. I want to find out more about her emotions and what her resolution is. Same. She needs some character development big time. And that would be one of the big things for her to face and get over. Whether she gets over or she clarifies or whatever it may be, she's a pretty cool character. I agree. I want to see more of her. Well, that wraps it up for this chapter. For next chapter, should we even try a prediction or should we just settle with the fact that we'll always be wrong? I mean, I think we're done with this scene and we're going to definitely go into another scene. I think we're going to start seeing the resolution of Matt's fight with Jam Jam, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully we're not going to leave him, you know, just a concrete block floating in the air. 
The hotel's just utterly being destroyed by the snake now. It is unusable at this point. There is no hotel. There is just a shell of a building. And two rankers are out in the lobby fighting as well. We've got Tiara and Yuri just kind of destroying the place in their own way too. Though they were trying their best not to overtly destroy it, the Strand Snake will probably make it easier for them to just say, to hell with it, and blow the lid off the building. That would be great, but I think they're going to get interrupted. I think we're going to get an interruption there, and we're not going to see them be able to go all out at this point. That's my prediction. And Kuhn. And Kuhn. We haven't seen Kuhn and Rock. Where could they be in all this mess? Are they stuck under some rocks or the buildings that are crumbling above them? No, they're probably just going to show up and they be like, hey, Bob. And Bob's going to be like, you won't believe the crap that I've seen today. And he has seen a lot, heard a lot, and it's just too much. Maybe they'll have a time to chat after all of this. Hopefully. They need it. Hopefully. See you. Please. Please. We're dying. But that's about it for this chapter. Thanks for joining us, regulars. We'll see you on the next floor. Goodbye. Have a good one.